Okay, welcome and thank you for your presentation. Looking forward to hear. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mika Strong. I work for Gaia Resources. We're a uh, software company that specializes in collections and um, environment style solutions. And today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, mapping between Darwin Core and the Australian Biodiversity Information Standard, which is a linked data example. So, oh, this is not working. Oh, there you go. It's working now. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. So um, the, the project that I want to talk to you about this morning is uh, what we call the BDR, which is a biodiversity uh, data repository um, made up of Australian biodiversity data that brings together government data and industry data and research data to facilitate government decision making and reporting. It uh, uses the underlying data model of ABIS, which is the Australian Biodiversity Information Standard, which is a, a fair data standard, which has a flexible and extendable model that um, really sort of focuses on, um, sorry, focuses on the uh, activity sort of style of um, the data that it looks at. There are sort of major classes include site and site visits, samplings and producing samples where you can make observations and uh, samples can have various attributes. So you can sort of use these major classes that are defined within themselves and um, you can have multiple of those within the data model that you're representing. So in the, the first phase or, or the pilot phase of this project, uh, we were looking at just bringing in data from a specific uh, data aggregator from the Western Australian Biodiversity Information Office. The data model that they were using is uh, primarily based in Darwin Core, and these are the various terms from Darwin Core that was used in that data model, and I'm not going to read them all. Um, so what we had to do is take the tabular um, data in Darwin Core. So, um, it's just coming in in sort of like a CSV style um, layout and then transform it into the, the linked data equi equivalent in ABIS. So this is almost takes it into more of a three-dimensional style of um, data that is all self-describing. And uh, yeah, this is what you see in the, the back end. It's not the way that data is visualized, but it's just to, to show you that everything is connected. And uh, we did run into some challenges <laughs> in terms of building this uh, data. So the diagram down below, which you don't have to read, just sort of shows this flow diagram of how we take the, the data from the tabular information, but we have to look at it uh, at each sort of point to see where the data has been populated within it, looking at the rules of the ontology, and that's for the red bits from below, and then build based on uh, di different decision trees, whether or not there's uh, specimens or just observations, and then coming out with the sort of linked data at the end. So uh, I also want to talk about a couple of specific challenges that we ran into when transforming the Darwin Core data into the um, ABIS data, and that is for every sampling and observation, you need to have a, a time, a geographic space where that observation or sampling was done, and also a protocol in how that data was collected. And if you're used to working with Darwin Core, you'll know that it's, it's just sort of uh, very descriptive in what that data is, but it's not um, often telling you about how that data was collected. So by having these very set um, rules in the ABIS standard that say, you know, you, you have to tell me when you went out into the field. You have to tell me when you made a subsample. You have to tell me when uh, you did the sequencing. Then it's like, mm, this creates some issues. <laughs> we did come up with some workarounds where we've got a, um, like a qualified value that says we don't know what time this was done, so we will store the, the time of the previous 
sampling that we did know about as an interim to get through the standard, but um, that, that's not data that we would project out at this time. Um, then there's example two is where the standard uh, really does focus on those, um, the I and the R in FAIR as in interoperable and uh, repeatable. So this is where it uses a lot of controlled vocabularies and has very sort of uh, strict rules on what sort of terms that you can use to represent the data. But yeah, so this is working great for FAIR data. But then when it comes to bringing in the, the Darwin Core data, which is, has a, a lot of um, free text and variations, and as um, yeah, our previous speakers have been talking about that, you know, there might be subtle differences in the way that people have been representing the information that says the same sort of thing. When you try and convert that into a control vocabulary system, it is tricky. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we have another way of working around that as well, where we, we can store the, those sort of free text information as is, and then we could come back to it later to try and convert those uh, free text values into having a representation of it in those control values, but also we still want to maintain that original data as well. So, um, in summary, ABIS is great in terms of um, representing that very fine detail of the sampling events and creating the data along the way, but it does uh, create some limitations when we are trying to convert summary data that just gets that high level of, you know, what are the, the nuggets of information that you want to take away and also um, from different data providers that are bringing in data into to one sort of data model source. Uh, so, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so Darwin Core is sort of working better in that sense in terms of being that um, very specific, easy to, to understand, but then with the variation in the data, it's harder to be more consistent. So pros and cons to the two different standards and how we use them. But with the, the ABIS, we can expand out and use other information to supplement what that data is representing in um, Darwin Core. So we can have things that are not usually represented in Darwin Core to add on. So uh, we're working with the ABIS working group to develop the standard further in terms of understanding how it's being used and uh, looking at those kind of constraints and ways that we can manage the data better. So um, that is it from me. And I think I went under time. Yay. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for your presentation. So I invite Hannah to the stage.